Welcome to F50 Global Insights. It has been well since we talk about the COVID-19 impact on investment. And now the investors from around the world together with entrepreneurs has adopted the new normal, means the pandemic will last for a while. So what are the impact to the investors' decisions and uh, what are the areas which investors are looking for to invest in the next uh, six months to one year. Today, we invited uh, uh, one of the tech incubator, uh, Alchemist uh, founder, Kiss Tira, and also he's a Silicon Valley based uh, uh, fund. Welcome, Kiss. Hi, nice to be here, David. Uh, Kiss uh, is a very famous in Android investor, has made a lot of successful investment, and also he's our mentor of our I think the elevator uh, as well. So kids, great to have you. So I want to start the question about uh, uh, which are the sectors which you are looking at and which sectors you think the investors, particularly in international investors will be looking to. So I, I, would, I would think it's really important for, your, for the listeners to understand Silicon Valley uh, deploys a huge amount of capital and that capital exists through funds. There are 600 micro funds in the Valley. A micro fund is a fund of less than 100 million. And almost every startup is invested in by a micro fund. And these micro funds, they have a long-term view, typically a, a three to five year view of their focus. The pandemic has accelerated some of the focus that already existed before. So you can think of, for example, support the individual away from the office as a focus. If the, if the individual is not in an office, then um, they need support systems, software and help. I, uh, I just invested in a company called Around, around.co. Around is a more enterprise specific version of Zoom. So unlike Zoom, where you join a meeting, with a round, you're in a meeting with your colleagues all the time and you bring documents and you bring work through the video conference. So it's work centric with video instead of being video centric with work. And a round uh, just closed uh, its second round of financing with, um, with really good investors because it's supporting the individual who can no longer be in the office. If you look at um, last week, four IPOs were announced, Asana, Snowflake, um, and two others. All of them were cloud-based enterprise infrastructure. Cloud-based enterprise infrastructure, basically the glue between people uh, and other people um, through the cloud. So virtual networks made possible through software and uh, in the case of Snowflake, databases made accessible on multiple cloud platforms. Um, so it's really, the focus is not as narrow as the, what you might imagine, which is uh, vaccines or diagnostics or therapeutics. Th those things, of course, are getting some attention, but the 10 year trend is just about the separation of the individual from the physical space and the software that enables that. Well, uh, the challenge is that those companies are IPO company and uh, Zoom is a hundred billion dollar company right now. So will there still space for early stage investors? Yeah, well, Zoom is um, reached the point at which it's going to become unbundled. What does that mean? Zoom is being used for a million use cases right now. Um, I'll give you an example. In, in One of my investments is Push Doctor. Push Doctor is basically a visit with the doctor using video. It doesn't use Zoom because the doctor visit requires the patient records to be integrated into the meeting. So uh, Push Doctor built a dedicated video platform with patient records and the ability to give a prescription and to charge um, Zoom can only do one of those things, the video. So Zoom is going to be unbundled. Uh, car sales. 
you're going to start buying a car over video with the salesman in the in the dealership talking to you on video. Zoom isn't going to do that because Zoom will only do one thing, the video. The car dealership needs you to fill out the lease application. It needs to accomplish various tasks on the video call. So there'll be uh, dedicated video companies building the car sales experience. So Zoom is going to become uh, the big generic platform, but it isn't going to support all of the specific use cases. And the opportunity is to invest in those specific use cases. Hmm. Okay, I see. So uh, other than other than like uh, this uh, infrastructure le uh, level of startups, uh, what other sector of startups you think has great uh, potential during the pandemic? Um, Food distribution is huge. Um, one of my companies is InFarm. InFarm has a big deal with uh, Kroger, the US supermarket chain, and with Sobeys, which is the Canadian supermarket chain. And they basically grow food in vertical farms and deliver it um, to consumers in the store from a farm. Um, they grow uh, leafy greens, herbs, all kinds of, you know, basil, thyme, all kinds of stuff like that. And uh, their demand is going through the roof because the logistics, uh, as, as the world has become more urbanized and has getting food from the countryside to the cities becomes more and more expensive and also wasteful in carbon, off, uh, carbon production. They've figured out a way to grow food in the cities and to deliver it fresh to the consumer. Uh, and the next stage is home delivery. Think of um, uh, the, the supply chain from the food where it's grown all the way to you ordering the food at home. This, this entire supply chain is being revolutionized. Uh, so also same thing in, for earlier state investors, since uh, a, couple, there are a couple of very successful for the delivery companies in place. I do believe home delivery service is, uh, uh, is a big trend right now because you cannot eat in a res restaurant anymore. But uh, there are so many complicated funded uh, already. Which area in this particular sector in the food delivery space still have the opportunity for a new startup, a new innovation? I, I think it's growing food. Um, I, I think it's right at the beginning of the supply chain because it doesn't make sense for the human race to use all the land to grow food and then to put it into vehicles and then transport it to cities and then distribute it to stores. It makes no sense. We're gonna have food that can be grown locally to wh where you live and you can buy it where it's grown. And, and so the entire farming industry the next 20 years, you're going to see massive change. In China, for example, the very large urbanization projects are already looking at vertical farming as a solution for city-based um, consumption. It's uh, Japan is very advanced. Um, in Europe, in Germany, Marks and Spencers, which maybe everyone would be familiar with in the UK, it has in-farm growing inside the stores um, that you pick the, the food from live. I think this is, this is the biggest opportunity because it's trillions of dollars, not just billions, trillions of dollars in food production. Uh, so in terms of this uh, food, uh, food production business, how is it uh, doing in America right now, other than the food delivery? Uh, it's doing well in America. There are three or four very large um, food production companies uh, in, in America that do vertical farming. Plenty, which has raised uh, hundreds of millions of dollars. Uh, Infarm, which has raised half a billion dollars. And three or four others, uh, smaller ones. But the market is big. Most cities don't have this yet. So it's a little bit like when Uber was only in San Francisco. Um, it, it, there's a lot of opportunity. So uh, food and the restaurant are such a big business in the past uh, since uh, a restaurant business can be hurt a lot. What other areas related to eating or lifestyle you yeah. think could have bigger potential? Um, I think uh, consumer debt. You know, consumer debt 
obviously has gone up a lot in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. Um, the biggest debt most people have is their mortgage. Um, they have to pay you know, thousands of dollars a month, depending on how much their house costs. Uh, but credit card debt has also gone up. Um, I think there are a lot of companies focused on releasing uh, equity to consumers from their house without replacing it with debt. So Point is one of those companies. Um, Homebrick is one of those companies where they replace a mortgage with co-ownership of your home. So for example, my home is, I have a mortgage of just over $1 million. They will give me $1 million to pay my mortgage. They will now own, let's say, 15% of my house. I will no longer have to pay $6,000 a month in mortgage. Um, but when I, sell, <laughs> when I sell my house, they will get their 15%. So it's long-term investment in residential real estate, turning residential real estate into an asset class and getting rid of debt. So the interest is so low right now. Uh, so I assume refinancing and lots of um, uh, financial transactions will have, um, will have potential. Yes, interest is low. But it's still, you know, for a 1.4 million mortgage, I will pay $3 million. Mm. If, if I can have somebody own 15% of my house instead of having a mortgage, um, then, and they pay the, the money for that, then, um, you know, I have an extra $6,000 in my pocket to spend on other things. So the economy would boom due to the additional spending money in the pockets of the normal people. Okay, this is, uh, this is, this is huge, this is huge. Okay, I definitely agree. So uh, other than food and uh, agriculture, what about the transportation? Since uh, now Uber, Airbnb, all this uh, sharing business now all facing different challenges, what do you see the opportunity in these areas? Um, actually, one of my companies, in, 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 this company is in the UK, it's called Snap Travel. Uh, what Snap Travel is doing is um, it's like Uber for buses, um, you know, privately owned coaches with 50, 60 seats. Uh, and they're making it possible for employers to hire a bus with social distancing. So a 60 seat bus will carry 20 people and take them to work and take them home. Um, so Snap Travel is Uber for bus transport with social distancing. Um, and it makes it possible to return to work sooner. Um, I have another one with uh, Chargeify. Chargeify um, is um, office management for the protection of human beings. It's for a safe office. So what they do is they have a wireless charging point on every desk where the desk has multiple people. And when the cleaner cleans the desk, the light will be green. Now the desk is clean. This wireless charging point has a sensor in it that can uh, it understands using the iPhone Bluetooth signal, the density of people at the desk, and it goes red if there are too many people at the desk and says, somebody must go to another desk. So it's managing the return to the office, keeping the office clean, making it possible to know it's clean. And at the same time, it does wireless charging for your phone, touchless, touchless charging. Uh, so it's, um, it's in the business of trying to revolutionize the office to be safe during COVID. Okay, great. So. Uh, I definitely want to invite you to ask, answer more questions, but today let's, can you give a suggestion, particular to many investors around the world who are looking for to make their decisions right now? Because I know many people hold their investment decision for the last six months, not that young. So I still hope, what, is, what should they do? <clears throat> well, I, I think of um, Silicon Valley as um, it's almost like a board game and you can win or you can lose at this board game. The way you win at the board game is to play the right game. And the right game in Silicon Valley is to understand that um, there is already a very good ecosystem that can pick 
the difference between a good startup and a bad startup. These are the microfund managers. Um, if you look at the data out of 600 microfund managers, 50 of them are responsible for 50% of all the future winners. Hmm. And so my advice is if you have money to invest, don't go directly into startups. Give it to people like you, David, or me, who are already <laughs> doing We already, we already do that. Become a fund investor, not a direct investor. As a direct investor, you probably lose your money. As a fund investor, if you pick the right managers that, that with the right track record, and I can, I can um, I'm, I'm not going to tell you who they are now because that will give away all my secrets, but <laughs> um, we know who they are from the data. And um, uh, 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 a fund of funds investing in these managers is the best way to deploy your capital. Okay, great to have you, Kiss. I definitely want to invite you to come back and dig into your secrets. Thank you, Kiss. Thank you.